I haven't made a video in a few days, so we're going to do a really quick walkthrough on how to deploy your own ERC20 token to the Robston testnet using Hardhat. We'll be creating two tokens, and then we're going to create a liquidity pool on Uniswap with those tokens so that people can swap your tokens on Uniswap, and it's going to be pretty cool. Then you'll literally be able to look up your coins here on Uniswap. I like dogs, so I created one called PugCoin. We'll do all this with code, obviously, and it's shockingly easy, so stick around if you want to see how to do it. I have an empty hardhat project here with package.json and some libraries already installed. So I have the hardhat toolbox, I have open Zeppelin contracts. We'll use that to create our ERC20 tokens pretty easily. I have Axios to make requests, .m to store some environment variables, and then obviously hardhat because this is a hardhat project. And I just realized I didn't actually run npx hardhat yet. So let's do that right now to create our hardhat config file. And we'll create the empty hardhat config.js file. So I mentioned I had .m installed. So I also have this .emv file where I'm storing some environment variables. And in my case, it's my wallet address on Robston, my wallet secret, and my infer URL for Robston. Let's start by making some minor changes to our hardhat config.js file. So I'm going to add two requires. I'm going to require the hardhat toolbox. And I'm going to require .m. Now we're going to add here an object called network, if I can spell. So the object is called network, and inside this, we will have another object called Robston, where, where we'll specify credentials that will help Hardhat interact with the Robston testnet. So we'll need URL, and I have this stored in my .emv file, process.env.infura, URL Robston. And this is the URL for interacting with Robston through Infura. You can get this by creating or logging into your Infura account and going to where your um, API keys are stored. And then you'll need to change the setting from mainnet to Robston, and that should come up. Now we also need accounts. And again, this is in my .emv file process dot m dot private key and this allows hardhat to deploy using my wallet on Robston. This is my Robston wallet's private key. And that's all the changes that we need to make to this file. Once we've done this, it makes it really, really easy to deploy your tokens to Robston. Now let's create a contracts directory, new folder, contracts, and we're going to create two tokens here. We'll call the first one PugCoin. And we'll call the second one Coin. Now we'll, we'll start with PugCoin and we'll do our usual Pragma Solidity 0 0.8.0 and then we'll import the ERC20 contract from Open Zeppelin contracts and this is just a predefined ERC20 contract that we're going to inherit from and this allows us to have a working ERC20 token without actually having to define any of the functions. And we'll say contract plug coin is ERC20. And I should mention that you can overwrite any of the functions that we're importing here if you want to customize this token. Constructor ERC20. Oh, and after that ERC20, we need to put the symbol 
and we need to put the name. I'm gonna call this PubCoin, and then in this constructor, we want to call mint, so that uh, whoever deploys this contract gets allotted um, some number of these tokens. So the deployer is message.sender, and how many do we want to deploy? Well, let's deploy 2,500, and by default, ERC20 tokens have their 18 decimal places, so we'll do multiply by 10 to the power of 18. And I forgot the S in constructor, which is why I always like to check if I've written my contracts correctly by compiling. That compiled, so let's copy this and we'll paste it into Kali coin and we'll just update some names here. So this is now Kali coin. And we will name this COL. And why don't we mint 3500 this time? Now let's compile this as well. Great, that worked. Now it's time to write a deploy script for each. New folder, scripts, inside scripts, we'll do one file called deploy pugcoin.js. And the other deploy Collycoin.js, and let's start with uh, deploy Collycoin this time. A sync function main const deployer equals await ethers dot get signers const Collycoin equals await ethers dot get contract factory pass in the name and the address that will deploy it and I should mention that when we call get signers um, in this context because we're going to specify the Robston testnet when we deploy this deployer is going to come from this account right here. This is an array. So if you specified multiple private keys for different wallets, you could import more than one signer here. Let's continue. Const Kali coin equals wait grab that object dot deploy console.log and we'll say callly coin deployed to callly coin dot address and I highly recommend printing the address that you're deploying it to so you have that. We are going to need that when we create a pool with these two coins in it on Uniswap. Now we need to run that main function. And this is a little snippet that I copied from the Uniswap documentation. Um, it just calls main and then it does some console logging. Now let's copy this and we'll paste it into our other deploy script. And we're just going to change the names. All right, done. Let's just deploy this. So we'll deploy Kali coin first. 
And let me just type this out here so you know the command. So npx hardhat run scripts. Here we're specifying this file, which is deploy Kali coin .js dash dash network robston. And that robston references this robston that you specified here. So if you name this something else, and then you wrote Robston here, it wouldn't find it and it's going to fail. So make sure that those are the same name. Now let's try deploying this. Okay, and make sure that you can spell, I wrote network wrong here, so it's not finding this. So this needs to be networks. And let's try to deploy this. Kali coin deployed to this address. I'm going to copy this string into this file um, in case I need this later. And let's deploy our pug coin as well. And then we'll go take a look on Etherscan and actually find these contracts. So we'll just update the name here. And we'll run this. And let's keep track of this address as well. Now grab that address, go to Robston Etherscan, search that address, and you can see that the contract for this token with the symbol pug and named pug coin was deployed 25 seconds ago and it created a contract. That's how easy it is to deploy contracts to testnet. Let's check our other token as well. Cool, so it was also deployed successfully. Now we're not done yet. We've just created the tokens, but let's create a pool. So I'll create a new file and I will call this create uniswap pool.js. This is obviously JavaScript. Here we're going to initialize the uniswap v3 factory locally. Then we'll call a function on it called create pool. We'll pass in the addresses of our two tokens as well as the fee that we want to be running on this pool. And then that will create the pool on uniswap, Robston. Testnet, obviously. We need ethers. We need Axios. We need dot env. And then we're also going to need the Uniswap v3 pool, well, v3 factory address. And we're just using this so that we can dynamically grab the ABI for the Uniswap v3 factory and because we need that to initialize the factory locally. And it's really easy to find the addresses for any Uniswap contracts. They have a page in their documentation called Uniswap Contract Deployments, and they just list the addresses for all their contracts. And the awesome thing about Uniswap is that they're the same on mainnet as well as all the test nets. So grab the one for the V3 factory and paste that in here. Then we will need a provider running on Robston, and we can do that with new ethers, providers.json RPC provider, process.env.infura URL Robston. I'm storing my uh, infura Robston URL in my .env file. 
const wallet address I'm storing my wallet address in my .env file the same with my wallet secret And then we'll want to specify the addresses that our two tokens were deployed to. So luckily I stored that here. So these are the two addresses we deployed our tokens to on Robston. And we're almost done the setup here. We need to set up a wallet, new ethers, wallet, and I'm going to need that wallet secret. And then I want to connect that wallet to our provider on Robston. Now let's get started with our main function. The first thing we do is we set up the v3 factory. And let's not forget to actually call this function. To set up our v3 factory, we need the ABI for the v3 factory. And we can get this from Etherscan. I'm going to copy and paste this line so I don't make any mistakes. And what this does is it grabs the ABI for a contract on mainnet by that contract's address. The ABI is the same regardless whether you're um, deploying the same contract locally on Robston on mainnet. And Etherscan is a lot more robust for mainnet, so that is why we're grabbing the ABI from there. So from this URL, let's, well, let's use Axios to get some data. Passing in the URL. And then let's get the ABI out of that. So we can do json.parse that result dot data dot result. And now we can initialize our v3 factory. So we'll say factory contract equals new ethers dot contract. And we can pass in the address. And this, this is the address on Robston as well as mainnet. And we can pass in the API that we just requested and then we can pass in our provider for Robston. If you're making more than a few requests, you'll need the API key. But because I'm going to try to keep this to just making one request today, we can just leave that as an empty string. If you do need that, create an account on Etherscan, um, go to the API section and you can create that key. Now the next thing we do is we create the pool. And we do that by using a factory contract, connecting our wallet, calling create pool on that. And here we pass in our two token addresses. and the fee and basis points. And I'm just choosing the 500 fee, but feel free to choose one of the two others. And I don't want to continue until that completes. 
we'll print that receipt. And then the last thing we want to do is print the address of this new pool. So that we can look it up on Etherscan. I'll name this new pool address equals await. We'll use the factory contract again. This time we'll call get pool and we'll pass it in the same variables. And then we'll console.log that address. And get pool looks up your pool based on each of these three inputs. So if I created a pool with these two tokens and a 500 basis point fee, but then I called the get pool with these two tokens but used a 1000 basis point fee, it wouldn't find it because it's a different pool. Let's give this a run and see how my spelling did this time. So I see status one on the transaction. So it looks like it went through successfully and I have the pool address here. Let's grab that and look it up on Etherscan. So far it has no transactions, but it's here. And if we go over to the Uniswap interface for Robston, we should now be able to look up our coin Let's try looking it up by the address. So I'm going to import that and I have 2500 because that is what we specified in that tokens contract. And let's look up our other token. And I have 3,500 of that. Now people can use Uniswap to swap our tokens. Pretty cool. Well, almost swap our tokens. If you wanted to make these actually tradable, you'd need to add some initial liquidity, aka tokens on both sides of the swap. I have another video about adding liquidity on Uniswap, so you can check that out if you're interested. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you found it helpful, and I'll see you next time.